cognitive impairment can be frustrating, even devastating for people experiencing it and for their loved ones. But how do you know where you or your loved one falls along that spectrum of cognitive impairment? Hi, I'm Dr. Patricia Shelton, lead medical communicator for Tahiro. Let's take an art, a look at this article here on Tahiro's website to understand cognitive impairment and how it can progress. And I emphasize can, because the first really important thing to know is that cognitive impairment and dementia are not inevitable consequences of aging. Certainly they do become more common as people get older, but not every single person ends up with dementia as they get older. And we'll talk a little bit later about how to reduce your risk of developing this problem over time. Um, but first let's go ahead and look at the levels of cognitive impairment so we can understand how this can progress over time in people who end up getting it. Um, our first stage is called no cognitive impairment. Now why is this a stage of cognitive impairment? Because some people whose brain appears completely normal, everything seems to be going well, sometimes they have changes in the brain that are later going to lead to cognitive problems. Again, not everybody, in fact a lot of people never develop any cognitive impairment, but some who don't show any obvious signs, later on they will be developing this, right? And we can't really know who when people are in this stage. Some of them will move on to the next stage known as subjective cognitive impairment or sometimes subjective cognitive decline means the same thing. And in this stage, most of the people around the affected person aren't going to notice that anything is wrong. But that person themselves and their really close loved ones, um, they'll start to notice more of what they often call senior moments, right? They walk into a room and forget why they're there. They forget somebody's name. They lose track of the mental math while they're doing their checkbook. Um, and these are experiences that are normal for everybody to have from time to time. People experiencing subjective cognitive impairment are having that happen to them more often than they expect, more often than they used to. And often they're really, really worried about this. Now it's also, again, important to know that some people in this stage will just stay in this stage and it will never progress and get worse. But some people will go on to develop the next stage, which is known as mild cognitive impairment. So this is past subjective cognitive impairment. Um, and in this stage, people are experiencing more of those senior moments where they maybe they forget appointments, maybe they start to lose stuff, even important stuff. Um, and they often can still live independently if they're in their own familiar environment. So in their own home, their own neighborhood, their own familiar grocery store, um, they're able to do their kind of usual daily activities. But as soon as they get outside of that familiar territory, so they visit somebody, they travel, they go to a different grocery store, um, that's when it becomes clear that the brain is no longer able to learn new information and solve new problems in the same way that it used to. And that's when the cognitive impairment will often become a little more obvious in this stage. Again, some people with mild cognitive impairment will just stay there. Some will go on to develop what we call severe cognitive impairment or dementia different terms for the same thing. And at this point, um, even in the familiar environment, people are no longer able to take care of their own lives. They forget how to cook, they can't take care of their finances, right? They can no longer kind of manage all of that, take, keeping track of everything. Um, and as it gets worse, often they lose the ability to communicate with language and even to recognize loved ones. And this, of course, is the stage of dementia that's absolutely heartbreaking and devastating for families. Um, so almost everybody would like to know how they can reduce their risk of developing dementia. They don't want to slip away like this. They don't want their family to have to go through this. Um, and there are risk factors that we know of that increase a person's risk of developing dementia as they get older. Some of those are not under our control, age, genetics, nothing we can do about these things. But there definitely are things that we can do to help protect our brains and reduce the risk of developing dementia later in life. And kind of the biggest levers that we can move are sleep, absolutely do whatever it takes to get a solid, healthy night of sleep every single night as consistently as you can. Getting regular physical exercise, and this is kind of 20 to 30 minutes pretty much every day, um, helping maintain blood flow to the brain, helping keep everything healthy. Um, use as little alcohol as you can get away with. Alcohol definitely toxic to brain tissue. And then eating a healthy diet. And what that seems to mean in the studies, the most important things are lots of fruits and vegetables. So that's antioxidants, vitamins, minerals, important nutrients for the brain. And then healthy fats. 
So um, the one most people think of is the omega-3 fatty acids found in fish, found in olive oil, um, and some people choose to take a supplement in order to make sure they're really consistently getting that daily amount that's important for protecting brain health. Um, and then the omega-5 fatty acids, which actually are almost impossible to get through diet. They're not really found in things that most people eat on a regular basis, but you can get those omega-5s through supplements as well. Um, so if you have any questions about any of this, please feel free to email us at knowledge at And as always, we're wishing you great brain health.